Hello students, welcome back. So today, I am Radha from DPS Halwani Lama Chaur. Today, I want to start another topic of the same chapter, Animal Kingdom. In this chapter, we have discussed about all 11 phylum. Okay, so the last phylum was we, which we have discussed that was the chordates. Okay, and again chordates we have divided into some divisions. Okay, or we can say in uh, some of the forms or in the two groups, what are they? It was the acranata and craniata. Right, in case of acranata, again we have divided into two. That was the urochordata and the cephalochordata. Right, but here the third one was the that was the craniata, and we have divided we have put into the vertebrata. So, total, what how many um, groups we are having urochordata, then cephalochordata, and the vertebrata. So, vertebrata again we have divided uh, into sub sub super class, or we can say we have divided into some uh, uh, groups here. So, what was the division that cyclo that uh, that was the gnatha, agnatha, and another one is the gnathostomata. Okay, so we can say we have divided the vertebrata into agnatha and the gnathostomata, and agnatha were the those animals which are having no jaws. Okay, A means absent, Gnatha means jaws. So, in case of Agnatha, there are no jaws and Gnathostomata, they were having the jaws, jaws bearing animals. So, right from here, we will start with the first division that was the Agnatha. Under the Agnatha, we are having the uh, different uh, classes. Okay, we are having different classes there. The first class which we are going to start that is cyclostomata. But before that, there was one more class which we have written in the classification that was the ostracodermy. But that was the ex extinct now, so we will, we will not study about that class. So we will start with the first class that is the cyclostomata. Clear? And it comes under the agnatha. Now, if I will say the cyclo, cyclo means something round, stomata is a pore like structure. So, if you will see the mouth of these animals, they are having round like structure of mouth and these mouth in which there are no jaws are present as it comes under the agnatha, right here. So, we can say that the sucking and the circular mouth is present in case of cyclostomata and these are without jaws here. Here I have drawn one picture of petromyzon. You can see here no jaws. If you will compare with your mouth, you are having jaws, upper jaw and lower jaws because you comes under the higher animals. Okay, you comes under the higher one and these are somehow lower. So if you will see the mouth, that circular mouth and without the jaws. Another important point that is elongated body. Their body is in the elongated form. Okay, so one by one we will discuss here the characteristics of the animals those are, comes under the cyclostomata. Clear? So the first one, they are the marine animals. Okay, these animals are mostly found in the marine or we can say they are, they always are always marine in nature. But condition is that for spawning or we can say for the reproduction, they are moving from one place to another place. Okay, as we have done that uh, this is the characteristics of animal for the search of food, breeding, they are migrating. Okay, they are moving from one place to another place. So, these animals are also showing some migration and this migration is known as anandromous migration. Okay, we will understand that we are having two types of migration uh, shown by the fishes that is anandromous as well as a catandromous migration. So here what is the meaning of anandromous migration? When the, these animals will migrate from marine to the fresh water. Okay, what is anandromous? When animals move from marine to the fresh water, this migration is known as anandromous migration. So here these uh, one migrating for what? These are migrating for the reproduction, for the spawning here. 
okay so what will happen they are not able to reproduce where into the marine water so they will move where into the fresh water as they will move towards the fresh water and they will give um, um, they, and they will reproduce and after uh, within few uh, days we can say the uh, the parent will get die okay that fish will get die and the larval which will form in the fresh water okay the larva which will form in the fresh water after the metamorphosis it will again comes into the marine water okay so are you getting here what is the use only for the reproduction they are moving for the fresh water and after forming the mature one again it is com coming back to the marine water right here so this feature is very very important about the cyclostomata then they are ectoparasites what do you mean by ectoparasite ecto means outer parasites means uh, when uh, there will be a mechanism in which it is taking nutrition by the other by harming the animal okay so we can say that these cyclostomata animals they are ectoparasite they lives on the body of other fishes and from there they are taking their nutrition clear here then another one is they are having 6 to 15 pair of gill slits as we are saying that this cyclostomata comes under the vertebrata so it will follow the characteristics of notochord, nerve cord, pharyngeal gill, gill slits, ventral mouth so everything will be similar in the case of cyclostomata also. So here we are, they are having 6 to 15 pair of gill slits and what is the function of gill slits for the respiration clear here as well as they are having some scales and the paired fins absent okay so we can say they, are, they don't have any scales and paired fins what do you mean by this paired fins you have if you will see the uh, fishes okay which we are talking about the true fishes they are having fins okay dorsal fin caudal fins so all they were the paired but if you will talk about these animals this is the petromyzon example of cyclostomata so they are having fins but these fins are unpaired you cannot see that if when you will say paired if this uh, this fin is present here it should be here also okay if it is here it should be here also so there must be pairing but here in this case there is no pairing of the fins here so this is also the important feature of the cyclostomata right here then again i said it will follow the same characteristics of vertebrata notochord and vertebral column will be there it will be present here then cranium and vertebral column are cartilaginous cranium is related to the head and the vertebral column that is from here to this part as it is seen in your body also there you are also having the vertebral column so this will be the cartilaginous they will not be the bony in structure but in our case it is a bony form but in the cyclostomata they are cut they are made up of the cartilage right here then bones are absent that's why i'm saying bones are not present in case of cyclostomata instead of that they are having cartil cartilage okay then again they will follow the closed circulatory system why why not because they come under the vertebrata clear and this is the feature of the vertebrata hmm? then only one nostril is present if you will see the um, uh, animals of these cyclostomata they are having one nostril when you will compare with your nose you are having two nostrils okay so we can say the condition in which only one nostril is present it is known as monorhinus okay and when we will talk about the two nostril the condition will be dirhinus right so here you have to understand that monorhinous condition is present in case of cyclostomata now if you will talk about the reproduction then unisexual okay only one sex is present in one animal whether it will be male as well as female and fertilization will take place externally both will release their gametes in water and there there will be fertilization takes place so here we have done external fertilization now some examples are there of these animals of cyclostomata that were the petromyzone it is also known as the lamprey and another one is the myxine it is also known as the hagfish okay now the important question which arises from this part it is that about this larva this amoset larva is only and only present in case of petromyzone 
okay so this is the larva which is present in the petromyzone so you have to memorize this larval name right here and here i have shown diagram of petromyzone your body is elongated form unpaired fins are present and if you will see here they are not having any jaws okay so like this we have completed the first class the class one cyclostomata after that we will study about the that one gnathostomata okay second division in which again what will happen it will uh, divide it into two one what are they we have done placodermy then we have done chondrich thighs and ostrich thighs okay along with this before that we have divided this gnathostomata into the two forms what are they pisces and tetrapoda because we human beings okay or the animals they comes under the tetrapoda those are having four limbs right here and the, uh, the fishes they are also having jaws and you people also are having jaws so both of, uh, of them they comes under the same that one is the gnathostomata now comes here with the second division that is the gnathostomata which means that it those animals which are having proper jaws so again we have divided this gnathostomata into two that was the pisces and the tetrapoda these are the super class under the gnathostomata pisces comprised of what all the fishes here i am talking about the true fishes not that fishes which we have done earlier one silver fish or uh, that different type of fishes which we have given name but that name is not based on the characteristics of the true fishes so in this one we will study about the true fishes and the another one that is the tetrapoda those are, those are having four limbs right here so first of all we will start with the pisces and again pisces super class has been divided into two parts what are they chondrich thighs ostrich thighs and before that there was one more class that was a placodermy right but now we are we are not studying placoderm because it's a fossil one right so we will start with the second one that is the chondrich thighs already we have done the class first cyclostomata then second class chondrich thighs and this chondrich thighs is also known as cartilaginous fishes okay and the another one is the class third that is ostrich thighs which is known as bony fishes so you can say that these are the higher one and these are the lower one if you will compare it right here so that this chondrich thighs is what those fishes which is ha having their endoskeleton made up of cartilaginous okay jinka endoskeleton kis se bana hota hai cartilage is cartilage se bana hota hai and ostrich thighs are those whose endoskeleton is made up of the bones here right so one by one we will understand the feature of these fishes both comes under the true fishes okay the first one is the are exclusively marine you cannot see these type of fishes in the fresh water so this is the feature or the key feature of the chondrich thighs that they are exclusively marine before that we have done different animals which were the only and only marine so here you can say they are also the exclusively marine now if you see the body the body is a streamlined body what is the meaning of streamlined this line okay so this streamlined body helps to swim in the water clear so body streamlined as well as the endoskeleton is made up of cartilage that's why we are saying cartilaginous fishes then again as they comes under the vertebrata so they will follow proper notochord and the nerve cord right here so notochord will be present in case of chondrich thighs no doubt then again this is the feature of vertebrata that they are having this is the feature of chordates we can say okay that the mouth is ventrally located so here also the mouth will be ventrally located ventrally means the lower part as if you will see our body our mouth is also located ventrally clear it is now again feature of that one that there will be gill slit but condition is that the gill slits are separate and there is no operculum okay so operculum is absent in the gill slits of these fishes here now another important thing is the tough skin or we can say the exoskeleton what is the exoskeleton the outer part which is providing stiffness to the body so here the exoskeleton is 
with the help of tough skin and that tough skin having the placoid scales okay what is their placoid scales you have seen many times in case of fishes scales are present so there may be different types of scales sometimes you can see this type of scales okay in the whole body you can see this type of structure so what it is it is a placoid scale it means that backward directed okay it is directed backwardly clear it is now the teeth are modified placoid so the teeth of these fishes are the modified form of these block placoid one and what is the meaning of placoid i have written, I have written here backward directed so this is the backwardly directed right here then absence of air bladder again this is very very important that air bladders are absent in case of chondrich thighs and that's why they keep on swimming okay if they they are not having air bladder what will happen they might be sick if they will not swim so what they are doing they are continuously swimming so that they will not be sinked right here so we can say absence of air bladder okay then heart if we'll talk about the heart in case of cordyx heart is there and this heart is two chambered heart one auricle and one ventricle and that's why it is also known as venous venous circulation okay venous blood why because there will be mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood in case of fishes as well as another feature is cold blooded animals what are these cold blooded animals those animals which cannot regulate their body according to the temperature or according to the environment okay so they cannot regulate according to the environment so these are known as cold blooded animals and opposite to that there is a warm blooded animals those who can regulate their body according to the environment for example we human beings okay we can regulate our body okay but they do not so this condition is known as what poikilothermus okay so what is this condition poikilothermus in which the animals are cold blooded then if we talk about the sexes separate one male different and female different and here you can see there will be some sexual dimorphism also what type of sexual dimorphism in case of male if you will see the pelvic fin if you see see the pelvic fin they bear some clasp like structure okay some clasping or uh, uh, we can say attaching like structure is present in case of male fishes but in case of female fish it is absent clear it is now how the fertilization will take place internal fertilization will be there and mostly they are viviparous okay so what is the meaning of viviparous they are giving birth to their young ones directly so here we have done about the general features of this chondrich thighs and examples are torpedo then trigon then scoliodon then shark so these all are the example of chondrich thighs those are having the cartilage endoskeleton right here and one more important thing some of the animals they are having specific structure okay they are having specific organ for example if we we'll talk about the torpedo it is also known as electric ray why because due to that some electricity is generating in their body okay they can provide you shock it may be of very small shock 100 to 200 volt but yes they are giving some shock so we have given the name electric ray and the organ is present in the body of the torpedo it is the electric organs right it is then trigon it is on a sting ray sting means some poison is present okay some poison is present in this sting so that's why we are saying sting ray now if we'll talk about the ostis thighs so ostis thighs having some characteristics some are similar to the chondrich thighs and some are dissimilar with the chondrich thighs so if we'll talk about the habit and habitat what are they they are marine okay and they can be fresh water but here you can see they are only and only present in the marine water clear so it can be marine as well as fresh water same thing to swim in the water body should be streamlined so streamlined body is present here also as well as here also but the endoskeleton is cartilage here but here it would be the bony right then here we have seen gills are present but these gills are separated okay and operculum is absent here but here you can see four pair of gills are present okay paired paired gills are present as well as they are covered with the operculum 
platelet. So this is also a difference. Then skin is covered by okay the exoskeleton which is made up of the skellies. These skellies are cycloid scales. Okay. In some of the fishes you can see that uh, this type of structure. Okay. What is cycloid form? So these are the cycloid scales but here if you will compare they are having placoid scales. Okay. And sometimes they are having tenoid scales. So these are the same thing and if you will see the fishes this type of structure is present. So this is the tenoid one. Now if we talk about the air bladder here air bladder was absent that's why they have to swim continuously okay so that they will not sink but here air bladder is present which is providing buoyancy and due to this they can float in the water very perfectly so air bladder is present here while they were absent in case of the contrast thighs right again this is the similar one two chambered heart is there one auricle and one ventricle right then again they are the cloud bladed animals Similar to the chondrich thighs, they cannot, they also cannot regulate their body according to the environment. So, they are the poikilothermus. Okay, then same thing, separate sexes are present. Fertilization is external. Okay, but here what you are seeing, internal fertilization. But here what will happen, both the parent will send their gametes in the water and there only there will be formation of the uh, progeny. Right here. And mostly they are oviparous. Oviparous means they are laying the eggs. Right. And the development will be direct. Why? Because there will be no larval formation. And if there will be larval formation, it means that there would be the indirect development. But here the development will be the direct one. Directly the eggs will give rise to the new uh, fishes. Right here. And here claspers are absent or we can say the sexual dimorphism which we are seeing here. It is not present in case of here. Here claspers are absent in case of male fishes. Now examples we have written here. As we are saying these can be the marine as well as the fresh water. Okay. And sometimes you are, um, you are uh, uh, taking the aquarium for fishes. So on the basis of this we have classified some of the fishes here. That marine fishes example are the exocetus or the hippocampus. Here what is what is your requirement to memorize all these examples as well as their common name. So exocetus is what? Flying fish and the hippocampus, hippocampus is seahorse and these lives only and only in marine water. Right? And what is what are the example of fresh water? Labio, rohu, ketla, these all you are also consuming them. So rohu, ketla, these are the fishes which is present here and in aquarium what type of fishes you are using beta and terophyllum so these are the very very important to memorize all the examples right here so these are the important thing about the Pisces super class in which we have divided into two classes so total we have completed three classes right here now again again we will study about the tetrapoda in this tetrapoda, how many classes we are having? We are having four classes. What are they? Amphibia, Reptilia, Aves and the Mammalia. And all these are in the sequence. Amphibia are the lower one and the Mammalia are the higher ones in which we human being comes under. Right? So uh, now we will study about the tetrapoda. Here under the division of the another one that one the gnathostomata previously we have done about the gnathostomata in gnathostomata we are having two of them that is Pisces as well as we have done the tetrapoda right so in Pisces already we have covered two classes that was the chondrich thighs as well as the ostrich thighs so total we have done till now three classes so the four class which will come here and fourth fifth and sixth and seventh okay whatever we will do here it all they will come under what they will come under the tetrapoda it means that they are having four limbs right here so first of all amphibia is there what is the meaning of amphi amphi means dual okay so here what is happening the greek it is taken from the greek word that is amphi as well as bios Amphi means what? Dual and bios mean living. So whatever the life, whatever the animals, they live their life both in land as well as in water, they are known as amphibians. 
clear it is so here we can say the four classes amphibia they can the habitat can be water as well as terrestrial right here then another thing about the two pairs of limbs what does it mean we are saying four poda tetrapoda it means that two pair these are the these limbs one pair and these two four uh, if you talk about a human we are having one pair of hand and one pair of legs here so total we are having two pair of limbs clear but in case here we are talking about the amphibians so they are also having four limbs and out of them two pairs are present here clear again another point is that if we will talk about the body body of the amphibians it is divided into what head and trunk if we will talk about the body of uh, head we are having then main body then we are having legs okay so like this their body is divided into only two parts that is head and the trunk you can take the example of frog have you seen the frog so frog having head part as well as the whole back part is known as the trunk part students we will study more about the anatomy more about the morphology of the frog in the another chapter clear so there we will understand all about their internal parts also so here that much is there because frog comes under the amphibian we can say that they are having body divided into two parts that is head and trunk okay another feature is that in some of the uh, amphibians tails may be present if you will see the frog there is no tail but in case of salamander okay they are having some tail like structure okay so we can say that uh, some of the forms of amphibians they are having tail clear if we we'll talk about the skin if you we'll talk about the skin of frog which comes under the amphibians you can see that the skin is moist okay and in their skin there is no presence of scales okay as we have seen in case of fishes in case of pisces we have done whether it is a chondrich thighs or we are talking about the ostrich thighs there was a skin scales but here that scales are absent and the skin remain moist why it is so because if their skin will be moist so they are able to breathe or they will they are able to respire through their skin also because it is one of the method of respiration in case of amphibians they can respire through their body surface also and this type so this type of respiration it is known as cutaneous respiration right so that's why their skin is moist clear another important feature is that the eyes having the eyelid right so you can see that eyes can be uh, open and close proper lids are present there now external no proper ex external air is uh, air is there so their air is known as tympanum in our case we are having this air but there they are not having proper external air so that's why what structure is present it is known as tympanum again this one is important one clear now if we we'll talk about the alimentary canal okay here in case of amphibians there is a common opening there is a common opening for three of the system here that is alimentary canal urinary as well as reproductive tract okay all these three system opens in a common chamber that is known as cloaca and this cloaca opens outside through which all these three will function right here there is no uh, different openings for different function right here then as i have said respiration takes place by different means in case of amphibians so the respiration can be take place through the gills as well as through the lungs as well as the skin okay so all three types of respiration is possible in case of amphibians and if we will talk about the gills these gills are present where in the larval stage so the larval stage of the amphibians they respire through what they respire through the lungs clear it is now again if we we'll talk about the circulation system circulation takes place and here heart will be three chambered okay previously in case of pisces whether it is a chondrich thighs or the ostrich thighs we said that the heart is two chambered it means one auricular and one ventricle venous circulation system 
but here there is a three chambered heart it means that two auricles and one ventricle is present okay two auricles and one ventricle is present in case of amphibians now again these are the cold blooded animals so this character is similar to the pisces that they were also having the cold blooded why because they cannot regulate their body temperature according to the environmental condition so and this condition is known as what this condition is known as poikilothermus okay now again sexes are separate both the male and the female body is different one and the fertilization is external both the gametes will release outside then there will be a fertilization and mostly or we can say there will be what type of uh, um, reproduction oviparous okay they are laying eggs and these eggs will give rise to the birth of the larva and then there will be a uh, formation of the particular animal clear and development will be indirect why we are saying because in some of them it will form a larval stage if we'll talk about the frog frog having the larval stage and that larval stage is known as what it is the tadpole larva right so we can say the development is indirect here and some of the examples we have done here frog you can see the hyla which is known as tree frog and bufo toad salamandra salamander all these comes under the amphibians right here and this salamander having the tail so this is the feature of the salamander here along with this if you'll talk about the teeth why i'm talking here some of the features are important like if you'll talk about the teeth of the amphibians okay so what are they all they are similar okay so we can say what type of condition is there homodiont okay in case of human beings we are having different types of teeth we are having incisors canine premolar molar but here in case of amphibians you can see that there is a homodont situation okay as well as one more uh, point i want to discuss here that these are the poly diphyodont okay what it is poly diphyodont what does it mean that teeth will come multiple times but in our case in human beings you can see that it comes twice that's why we are diphyodont okay what is polydiphyodont clear now like this we will study about the reptilia class which again comes under the tetrapoda reptilia means what this word is greek word rapper and rapper or raptum relates to something which is creeping and those animals which creep on the land these are they or they are crawling on the land these are known as reptilia right so reptilia are what those animals which are having ability to crawl or to creep on the land now if they are crawling it means it mostly they are terrestrial see here as we are moving towards the mammalia from amphibia to reptilia then we will discuss avies then we will discuss mammalia what we are observing we are observing that they are moving or they are trying to move towards the land okay so here they have tried to both but they are dependent on their fertilization in water one more important thing they can live both in water as well as land but they are dependent for their fertilization for what in water clear but here as we will move so mostly of mostly animals they will become the terrestrial right here so we can say mostly the reptilia animals they are terrestrial forms now if you will compare with the body types or the body so here body is how body is somehow moist because they have to respire through it but here the body covered by very dry and cornified skin okay have you seen corn so very dry in structure so we can say that their skin is very dry right and again along with this the skin is dry and the outer part is made up of epidermis and this epidermis is what it is the scales which were absent in case of amphibians okay so these scales are absent in amphibians while in case of reptilia these scales are present right here scales are the scutes uh, in examination it may be asked that what is the difference between the amphibians and reptilia 
and question may be like this what are the similarity between these two so you must know that what are the similarities and what are the differences here so this is the difference right another the point is that they don't have any external layer like amphibians they also don't have any external layer so to represent the air they are having again some structure which is known as tympanum okay this structure is similar to that this one amphibians also have tympanum and the reptilia also having the tympanum which represent the air right here then again they are also having two pairs of limbs as we have done in case of amphibians they were also having the two pairs of limbs so we can say it is the similarity between these two now comes to the heart as we are moving towards the higher one what we are observing the chamber will be more in case of fishes we have done two chambered then in case of amphib amphibians again we have done some advancement three chambered so here again in reptilia they are having three chambered heart clear they are also having three chambered heart but yes important is what exception exception is what crocodile crocodile having four chambered heart so this question is important for the mcq that crocodile having how many chambered heart because we know that crocodile comes in the reptilia and we know generally in reptilia we are having three chambered heart but it will not be true for the crocodile they are having four chambered heart clear and the point is poikilothermus poikilothermus is what say here that they cannot regulate their body temperature and they are what they are the cold blooded animals okay so they are also cold blooded and they are also cold blooded animals now the snakes most of the snakes they comes under the reptilia because they uh, they used to crawl or the creep in on the ground so snakes as well lizards all they are the reptiles and what is the feature of these two that they shed their skin okay so the skin is present in form of scales so we can say that uh, time to time frequently what happens they uh, remove their scales and this condition or this um, phenomena it is known as skin cast so skin cast is what that removing or shedding their scales from the body clear and it is happening in case of snakes many times you have seen the uh, skin cast of the uh, these snakes right so now if you talk about the reproduction again both the sexes are separate in separate body and fertilization will be internal here right so in the female body only then another important thing oviparous they lay their eggs that's why we are saying they are oviparous have you seen the eggs of snakes right so mostly what they are doing they are uh, laying the eggs and the development is direct so you cannot see any larval stage here in case of reptilia one more important thing as you are moving towards the higher one what you are observing that development is now direct one there is no larval stage formation in the higher animals okay so in case of reptilia the development will be direct right here and again we have to discuss about some examples here that is tortoise chameleon as well as crocodile cobra cobra and bengal's what these are the poisonous snakes so all the snakes comes under the reptilia one okay and along with this we can say respiration is also happening in form of lungs in case of reptilia also so now we will move towards the sixth class that is the aves so now the sixth class that is aves right before that we have completed uh five classes before that we have completed about the amphibians then reptilia okay then the another one is aves again it comes under the tetrapoda it means that they are having some limbs or the um, limbs are present so here what we can say the move all the birds okay some exceptions are there but all the birds they comes under the aves right here and not exception we can say that birds comes under the aves class right here and one important question the study of birds okay when we are studying of the birds that science is, is known as ornithology what what we are talking ornithology is what when we are studying about the birds okay and here 
why we are seeing birds because they are having the ability to fly and for flying what is required feathers are re feathers are required so here we can say the first point that feathers are present in case of aves class okay then yes they can fly with the help of these feathers but exception is there exception is what exception is ostrich which cannot fly or we can say it is a flightless bird so ostrich is a flightless bird right here so another one they possess the beak in birds you have seen that beak is present okay so beak uh, having beak it is a characteristics of the avis class then another one their forelimbs are modified because we are saying that they comes under the tetrapoda it means they are having four limbs so have you seen all four limbs in case of birds only, only you have seen only two limbs what are they in which they are walking or in which they are uh, uh, they are using for climb uh, for climbing okay so here we can say that their four limbs are modified into the wings so the the four limbs which are having in the avis they have modified their four limbs to form a what to form the wing like structure that's why they can fly right here and here the hind limbs the things which you are seeing there that was the hind limbs that hind limbs is made up of a composed of some scales so they are modified for what for they are modified for walking you can see the birds walking so with the help of what with the help of their hind limbs right and sometimes they are using for the swimming for clasping so all for their function they are using their hind limbs and for their flying they are using their fore limbs okay now another one if you recall the skin of the amphibians we said their skin was the moist one in case of reptilia we said the skin will be dry or cornified but here skin again it will be dry okay the skin is dry of birds except okay except in some part what is that part the base at the base of the tail you can see that some oil glands are present okay otherwise the whole skin of the birds they are dry right here then and all the and again they are not having any glands okay but here some oil glands are present at the base of the tail now about the endoskeleton in case of cartilaginous we said there was a cartilage in the whole body there was no bones from the ostrich thighs what we are observing they are having some bones so here if you we'll talk about avis so they are also having some bone and that bone is forming their endoskeleton it's providing stiffness to their body so whenever this bony endoskeleton is present we can say they are ossified endoskeleton right here now some bones are there which is uh, which is hollow like structure okay the long bones which is present in case of birds they are hollow and that's why they helpful for flying because if weight will be less then it is will be easier for them to fly that's why the long bones of the birds they are hollow and this hollow with having some air cavities okay which help them to fly properly and it is providing some pneumatic structure or the pneumatic phenomenon right here then another characteristics of avis about the digestive tract in case of amphibians you have seen that proper alimentary canal is there okay but here if we we'll talk about the avis their digestive tract is present along with this digestive tract they are having some more structure in their digestive tract that is crop and gizzard so crop and gizzard is present where in the digestive tract of the birds clear now again very very important in case of amphibians or in case of reptilia we said they were the cold blooded animals as well as the pisces also they were the cold blooded animals so whatever the class which we have discussed before this birds all they were the cold blooded animals but here they are the warm blooded animals so we can say birds are the warm blooded animals because they can regulate their body temperature according to the outside environment okay now this condition is known what 
the cold blooded animals in which they cannot regulate the condition was the poikilothermus so here it is the homeothermus okay so here it will be the homeothermus then how the respiration takes place the respiration takes place through the lungs as well as in case of amphibians gills were there lungs were there cutaneous respiration was there in case of reptile reptilia lungs were there but here also they are having lungs right here and these lungs having some air sacs which will helpful for their proper respiration or for the additional respiration so the additional respiration has been done with the help of this air sacs which is con connected to these lungs in case of birds right here then the sacs are separate same thing same male and female body is different one fertilization will be internal the fertilization will be internal why because it will takes place inside the body of female and they are oviparous it means that they can lay the eggs and the development will be direct because there will be no larval stage right here so most all the examples like we are we have discussed about the birds or uh, whether crow pigeon sparrow peacock parrot all these birds comes under which class under the aves here right so the last class that is mammalia in this class we human being also comes under the mammalia so what will be the uh, Uh, feature the first one is that variety of habitats the mammalia can live in variety of place for example we have done some of the example polar ice caps okay in the polar regions as well as they can live in desert they can live in mountain they can live in cave so most of the wide region they can live okay and another one is that some of them adapted to fly or to live in water you can see that some of the mammals they can fly also and some of the mammals they can live in water also okay so some forms are also present under the mammalia then presence of mammary gland so this feature is important for having the class mammalia it means that all those animals which comes under the mammalia they are having mammary glands to feed their young ones right here then two pairs of limbs two pairs of limbs adapted for walking if we'll talk about the um, human beings we are having four uh, four limbs and two limbs we or uh, we can say two pairs of limbs are there and they are for what they are adapted for walking by the one pair uh, of legs what we are doing we are walking okay and these we are using as a hand but in some of the animals how they, they are using their limbs so the two pair of limbs they can be adapted for walking also they can use for running also they can use for climbing burrowing swimming or flying whatever the activity they are doing they will do with the help of their limbs right here then another important point about the mammalia that they are having skin first or the hairs are present on their skin this is the feature of the mammalia now here there is a proper external ear okay you can see in uh, uh, in case of human also we are having proper external ear that's why we cannot say we are having tympanum tympanum is what when there is a no external ear so here what we will use a term pinna what it is pinna the external ear another condition is heterodon what is the meaning of heterodon in case of amph amphibians i said that they are having homodont condition what does it mean it means that what type of teeth is present but in case of mammalia there are different types of teeth okay for uh, chewing for grinding for tearing for shred for shredding so we can say we are having different incisors canines premolars and molars so that's why the condition is heterodont and another condition uh, showed in case of mammalia of teeth is diophyodont because it comes twice in the whole life then about the heart again it is a four chambered heart because we are the highly evolved so before that in case of birds also they were having the four chambered heart and here also they are having four chambered heart clear now if you will see about the condition of, again it is homeothermus which is here homeothermus homeothermus is what homeothermus is that they can regulate their body temperature so these animals which comes under mammalia they are also 
homeothermus. Another point is that respiration. Respiration again takes place with the help of lungs which same as in case of birds. So you can see that most of the similarity is present between birds and the mammalia. Right here. Then again sexes are separate. Almost in all the all of them, all the classes what we are observing, sexes are separate and fertilization will be internal inside the female body and mostly they are viviparous. It means that they are giving birth to their young ones instead of laying eggs and so development will be direct, no larval stages here. And some of the exception is there in case of platypus. Okay, platypus comes under the mammalia, but it is the animals which lay eggs. That's why we can say it is the oviparous. Otherwise, mostly animals are the viviparous under the class mammalia. Right? And now, examples are there. So, so many examples are there. Uh, kangaroo, camel, horse, tiger, monkey, human beings, all they come under the mammalia. Right here. So, on the basis of different characteristics, we have classified them into different classes. So, uh, now in this chapter, we have completed everything. We have completed all the phylums and their classes. Right? So, that's all for today. Thank you.